Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So today we are going to start the chapter number nine, and this chapter is about natural ecosystem and the human activities. So first of all, we should know the definition of the ecosystem. The all living things together with all non-living things in an area, so they make an ecosystem. For example, this is a particular area. In this area, you are find you will find living things and you will find non-living things all of them together they make an ecosystem the living things they are known as biotic components and non-living things they are known as abiotic components so the living things and in an ecosystem can be described at a number of levels so you can say and they can be described in different levels but first of all we'll see the definition of the ecosystem so if a question comes what is the ecosystem you said you can say that ecosystem is made of living things and non-living things in an area or you can say the ecosystem is made of biotic components and abiotic components after that another term which will be used in this chapter that is population all organisms of one species living in a defined area at the same time that's known as population in the last class when we are talking about the population of uh, humans so we have discussed this term there also that number of the things or you can say organisms living in an area but they should be the same species so that is known as the population after that we talk about the community now a group of different population that group of different population living together in a particular area where they also interact with each other that is known as community that's known as community in other words you can say that in a population you have only one type of organisms in population you have only one type of type of organisms for example now if i give example let's see this is an area in this area you have cat how many 500 and then the rabbit let's say there are 400 total then you have let's say rats they are 200 so when you talk about what is the population of cats so then you will talk about only cat only one organism one species only and if you talk about the community so population of cat population of rabbit and rat all together they are making one community so this is the main difference between population and community. Community, a group of population of different species that live together in an area and interact with each other. After that, habitat. The place within an ecosystem where an organism lives. So that is known as habitat. For example, if you talk about fish, they are living in a pond. They are living in a lake. They are living in a river so that is their habitat if they are living in a pond or in a pool so that pool is a habitat for them then the word is niche or nick both are okay one is british pronunciation what is american so you can say niche or niche so that is the role of a species within an ecosystem that is known as for example now if you talk about any food chain let's say you have plants then you have grasshopper then grasshopper is eaten by birds and the birds are eaten by eagle so now here what are the plants plants are producers so if we talk about the role of the plant in this food chain so it is producer so then we can say 
द निच ऑफ प्लांट इज प्रोड्यूसर देन इफ यू टॉक अबाउट ग्रास होपर यू कैन से दे आर प्राइमरी कंज्यूमर्स सो द निच ऑफ द ग्रास होपर इज अ प्राइमरी कंज्यूमर सो दीज आर द रोल वट इज द रोल ऑफ एन ऑर्गेनिज्म इन एन इको सिस्टम सो दैट इज नोन एज इट्स निश एनी कंफ्यूजन नो यस आला ओके नाउ वी टॉक अबाउट द बायोटिक फैक्टर्स एज वी डिस्कस दैट बायोटिक फैक्टर्स मीन्स द लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म इन एन इको सिस्टम और लिविंग components for example number 1 producers producer within an ecosystem that can carry out photosynthesis so they are one of the biotic factors number 2 primary consumers organism with an ecosystem that derive their food from producers so they are known as primary consumers for example if i'll say as you have grass grass is eaten by grasshopper grasshopper is eaten by bird bird is eaten by eagle so if you talk about their classification we will say that this grass is a producer grasshopper is primary consumer bird is secondary consumer and this is known as tertiary consumers so the animals are the organisms they take their food from producers they are known as primary consumers and organisms or animal which depend on primary consumers they eat primary consumer so they are known as secondary and the same way the organism which eat the secondary they are known as tertiary consumers so here they have defined producer which produce food by photosynthesis primary consumer which depend on producer secondary organism which depends on primary consumer in the same way this one so these are four you can say components after that you have decomposers decomposers are the organism within a ecosystem that drive their food from bodies of dead organism for example if any plant or any animal died any plant or any animal died so you will find that after some time its body will disappear in the soil why because there are small organisms which will break down all its body into small particles or small you can say size so it will mix with the soil so that the small part the organisms which break down the dead body of plants and animal they are known as decomposers now they have given here a uh, food pyramid you can see here producers then primary consumers then secondary consumers then you have tertiary consumers so this is the diagram by which you can see easily that what do we mean by primary consumer secondary and tertiary another example you can see here you have the decomposers after that you have plants then you have herbivores or primary consumers then you have carnivores or secondary consumers or then you have tertiary so this is another example just like for explanation now food chain if you talk about food chain now see here you have producers producers are eaten by primary consumers primary consumer eaten by secondary consumers secondary consumer by tertiary and the tertiary is known by apex 
predator or it known as high level consumers predators also known as high level consumers and then if this will die so the organism will decompose it the decomposer will decompose it and again it will go to the plants so this is like a chain so this is known as food chain any confusion no after that you have a biotic factor a biotic factor means the non living factors or what are the non living factors number one temperature usually it expressed in degree celsius and sometime you have in kelvin also and sometime you have in fahrenheit also living things have a range of temperature within which they can survive so they are saying that different organism different animal they have different temperature on which they can survive for example if you talk about the animals who are living on the north pole south pole or you can say on the very cold uh, you can say areas so their body temperature can men can say adopted can be adopted by that temperature and they can survive their body will be used to of that temperature and the other hand the animal who are living in desert and you can say other areas hot areas so then it mean they can survive in that so there the different the organism different animal that have different temperature on where they are living after that you have humidity humidity means the water vapors amount of water vapors in the air the so a measure of how much damp the air is damp mean wet moisture how much water vapors it's hold usually express as relatively humidity you have rh and minus rh express humidity as the percentage so whenever they will ask the for example the weather forecast they will ask what is the humidity so they will say 10% what is if there is really humid maybe they say that it is 6 80% humidity so like this that there are different uh, you can say humidity levels at different areas for example if you are in a desert area the humidity level is really low but if you go to the sea side like the here in saudi arabia you have jadda you have the mam or in uae i think all these especially dubai they have the lot of humidity so that's known as humidity level so this is the second component of the abiotic factors of an ecosystem after that you have the water you know that water is essential for life and it's raw material for photosynthesis it's really important plants obtain water from the soil and water content of the soil in an important factor in determining where exactly the plant species lives so water is also a abiotic factor after that you have oxygen you know that in the air you have oxygen about 20 to 21% and if you go above to a height so the oxygen level will decrease and the the usually expressed in parts per million maybe you saw this thing written on water bottles also ppm it means parts per million so that they're saying how much the amount of oxygen in a any uh, you can say substance or in the atmosphere that's known as part per million not very soluble in water so all aquatic organism have adaptation to get enough for example the fish they get from the gills so they're saying that it is not much soluble in water the ox they are talking about oxygen but the the organisms which are living in the water so they can take the oxygen with the help of their gills like fish so they have their natural adaptation so this is the third thing uh, sorry fourth thing of a biotic factor after that you have salinity salinity mean that how salty 
how much salts are present in that ecosystem that is also uh, parts per million and sometimes it's known as parts per thousand so it means that how much uh, ecosystem the soil you know sometimes the soil become white so then it is due to the high level of salts in the soil so soil salinity is also an abiotic factor after that you have the light light is essential for photosynthesis okay and the percentage or the amount of the light they it is expressed as lumens lumens then you have the ph ph mean the it find the acidity of a soil for example the ph scale start from 0 and up to 14 7 is neutral so then ph also is an important factor of an ecosystem so these are the factors of an ecosystem which factors abiotic factors here they again they just like a summary they have described here that if you talk about the biotic factors mean living things and in that you have protesters you have plants animals fungus bacteria on other side you have water soil air minerals and light so they are known as abiotic factors any confusion yes rahaf allah no yes allah no. okay okay now there are some processes which are happening in ecosystem for example first one is a food chain as i discussed before that food chain means you will make a chain of the organisms depending on their niche mean their role for example sun provide energy to the grass so it is a producer then you have primary consumer then you have secondary consumer then you have tertiary then you have high level predators so if you will show them like this so that is known as a food chain here also then and the example of food chain you can see this one also the food web food web is made of different food chains different food chains are connected with each other now for example here if you talk about the plant for example here you have a plant and then you have you have berries berries also a plant so it is eaten by grasshopper grasshopper is eaten by frog and this plants also eaten by butterfly the this berry is also eaten by bird this bird is eaten by snake also by vulture and also by fox so there are different food chains they combine together they are interlinked with each other so they are known as food web they are known as food web a food web is consist of lot of food chains now if you talk about if i want to make a food chain from this one from food web you can make a lot for example i want to make like this 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 and this no sorry i can make like this from here this is one food chain if i want to make another one see from here i can make this 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 and this 
if I want to make another one, we can make like this. From here, direct this one. Then you have snake. Then you have this one. Or you can make another one directly from here like this, like this, then like this. So there are different food chains are there in a food web. This is another example of food web here. You can see here, this is plant, then eaten by giraffe, giraffe eaten by cheetahs, and sometimes cheetahs can be eaten by leopards, and leopards can be by lion, or you have the you have the deer and then you have the leopards or all this one so they are different food chains are there in a food web after that you have trophic level what is a trophic level now a trophic level a feeding level within a food chain or food web how many trophic levels are there in a food web or a food chain I will explain to you with the help of diagram in the next page. Now see this one. First of all, just one minute, hold this one, then go for the this one. Pyramid of numbers. Pyramid of numbers mean that there is a pyramid and this pyramid is showing the different numbers of different species. For example, this, this pyramid is showing that, for example, it's a food chain. The leaves are eaten by caterpillars, caterpillars eaten by blue tits, and blue tits are eaten by the hawk or the eagle. Now, but the pyramid of number mean that how many leaves are there in this ecosystem? They are 100,000. How many caterpillars are there in this ecosystem? They are 10,000. How many blue tits are there? 100. So this, the pyramid, which will show you the number of organisms living in a food chain, that's known as number of pyramids. After that, for example, you have leaves. So this is known as first or trophic level one. This is trophic level two. This is trophic level three. This is trophic level four. So it means that how many producers, primary consumers, secondary, how many levels are there? So they are known as trophic level. So how many trophic levels here are four? So this is the pyramid of numbers and the trophic level. Did you get it? Yes. Yes, Allah. Yes. Okay. Then that was the energy of uh, the pyramid of numbers. Now you have pyramid of energy. Now see this one here. Now the pyramid of the shape reflects the loss of energy at each trophic level. So here, how many trophic levels are there? Can Rahaf, can you tell me? Yes, sir. How many trophic levels are there in this pyramid? Trophic level. Five. Five. Each one is known as one level. One, two, three, four, five. In the exam, they can ask sometime that how much, what is the number of traffic levels they can ask. Before this energy, before this energy pyramid, there was pyramid of numbers. For example, how many primary producers they can say 100,000. So the numbers were written here. But in this energy pyramid, energy is written here. Energy is written here. How? I'll explain to you now. Now, 
Now, let's say primary consumers, they have 100% energy. Or in other words, they, let's say they have 100 joules of energy. Producers. Then this is first traffic level. Traffic level. Then to the next traffic level, out of 100, only 10 joules of energy will transfer to the next level. Other 90 joules, they will be waste. According to the rule that only 10% go to the next level. For example, what is the 10% of 100%? 10. And other 90, it is waste. Now in the second one, how much energy is reached? That is 10 joules. Then from this 10, how much will go to the secondary the, uh, consumers or third trophic level? How much will go out of 10? Sir, I didn't get your question. I'm saying that, for example, you have here 100 joules of energy on the first level. Okay. Did you get this thing or not? Yeah. Okay. This is the first trophic level. This is second trophic level. This is third. This is four. This is five. They are saying, according to the rule, only 10% energy will go to the next level. Other 90% it will be waste or loss. Then if here is 100, how much will energy will go to the next level? Only 10 joules because 10% 10 of 100 is 10. Now from second to third trophic level, if here is 10, how much will go to the next level here? One. Hmm? one one joule because 10 percent of 10 is one if you have 10 joules one percent is 10 after that if here is one so how much will go up again you will 0 0.1 0 0.1 then again how much 0 0.01 if you go six level, so it will be 0 0.001. If the seven level to go be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, Got it? Only 10% yes. is going to the next level. Other 90% is energy lost as a heat. Did you get it? Yes. So in the exam, sometimes they give a question. They will write here, let's say 1000. Okay. Now, Allah told me how much will come here. If here is 1000, how much will come in this level? 100. 100. Sorry, 100. Here, how much? Ten. Hmm? Ten. Ten. How much here? One. One. How much here? Zero point one. Zero point one. Okay. Now, Rahaf, you tell me. If you have here ten thousand, how much will come here? One thousand. Here. 100 here 10 here and then one so have only 10 percent will go there other 90 percent will be wasted here they have given the same thing here they started with hundred thousand and there are five profit level so here 100000 then you have 10000 then you have 1110 so this is the rule 
टेन परसेंट रूट सो देर सेंग वेयर दिस एनर्जी गोज सो देर सेंग दैट एनर्जी इज लॉस ड्यूरिंग ट्रांसफर ऑफ हीट टू द एनवायरमेंट यूज फॉर सेलर रेस्पायरेशन यूज फॉर द ग्रोथ लॉस्ट एज अ फेसिस 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 मीन द वेस्ट मटीरियल फ्रॉम द ऑर्गेनिजम लॉस्ट बाय इनकम्प्लीट डाइजेस्टन बाय हायर ट्रॉफिक लेवल फूड चेन कैन नॉट हैव मोर देन फोर और फाइव ट्रॉफिक लेवल्स एज देर इज नॉट इनफ एनर्जी टू पास ऑन देर सेंग दैट any food chain so it will not have more than five trophic levels why because if there is four trophic level so then very small energy is left to pass to the next one if you will not pass the energy to the next one so next one cannot survive so this is the explanation after that you have the photosynthesis this photosynthesis is just like for your information in the exam they will not ask any scientific question that how the photosynthesis will occur what are the products what are the reactant all this one no just like for the general definition photosynthesis is a process by which plants produce their food with the help of sunlight and there is a chlorophyll they also to use carbon dioxide like this just go through this one you will get this one here you can see this is a diagram which shows how the photosynthesis happens after that you have respiration so respiration is they are saying that this is a opposite of the photosynthesis how it is opposite to photosynthesis because in photosynthesis plants use sunlight and use carbon dioxide they produce oxygen and the food in the form of sugar okay here the at night they take the oxygen and then they release the carbon dioxide and they also use the food inside them so this is known as cellular respiration so in other word you can say they are opposite to each other so here they have given the comparison photosynthesis occurs in a presence of light and also chlorophyll in the plant cell occurs at all the time in the cell requires energy to make glucose release energy from glucose and sugar carbon dioxide and water are needed carbon dioxide water are as a waste product oxygen is given out oxygen is taken in is like a small comparison this is the chemical equation for that one for cellular respiration you can see carbon dioxide water energy they will give you that food or glucose and oxygen and here glucose oxygen and carbon uh, they give you carbon dioxide and water and energy as per i have also seen that now can you after that you have biotic <laughs> interaction biotic interaction means that biotic from the name you can say they are talking about biotic factors of ecosystem now first one is competition living things need to range of resources from the environment many youngers are produce then will survive so there is often competition of resources individual least adopted to the current condition will either die or fail to reproduce they are saying that you know for example you have an ecosystem in the ecosystem let's say you have rabbits 1000 rabbits are there now there is a food only for let's say 800 so now there is a competition between 1000 because food is only for 800 so other 200 they will if they will not get the food they will die so it means there is a competition all of them to get the food they are saying that not only food competition also the weather for example if the uh, organism they produce the small babies if the weather is harsh weather is really difficult so then they maybe they will not survive maybe you will find that 
even the cats they give birth let's say eight babies and due in winter especially due to weather conditions or due to cold some of them die only let's say four are left so this is also a competition eight have a competition with what with weather and only how many survive four <coughs> so this sorry so this is the how the competition is between the same organism or even the different not only rabbit let's say you have the cats also in the same system they are living together and the food is for less food is less so they can also have a competition between different species also so this is known as competition after that you have predation predation means when one animal eats another one so that's known as predation like loin and all this one they eat all the animal grasshopper will eat small part of a grass but animals who eat all the other animals that's known as predation like you have like pollination is a biological term and biology you are studied this one that the transfer of pollen grains mean the male gametes from uh, from the another to the stigma for it to fuse with the ovule female gamete so this is a process in which the pollen grains from the male gametes they will fuse with the ovule of a female gamete in plants male sex cells are found in pollen grains made in the anther pollen grains are either blown by wind or carried by insects the anther is in the in the flower attracting the animal with bright colors scent and production of nectar the pollen grains lands on the stigma of another flower and sends out a tube that grows down where the ovule is the ovule is then fertilized to form an embryo in a seed that grows into a plant so this is how the pollination happens but if you see the past papers you will not find that they ask the detail that how the pollination happen they can ask that as a process that pollination is a process in which the fertilization happens in plants after that you have the mineral cycles now as a consumer is obtaining energy from the low level or from the level below it is acquiring the mineral that it needs now if you talk about the any consumer for example yesterday we talk about the primary con the producer in the bottom you will find producers then you have primary consumers then you have secondary consumers then you have tertiary consumer so they are saying that from where the primary consumer get their food from producers secondary from where from primary consumer secondary consumer from where they get the food secondary consumer they are saying that every level is getting food from its level below for example what is below the, than secondary consumer that is primary consumer so secondary consumers are taking their food or their needs or their minerals from the the level below so which are the minerals which they are getting this these includes carbon oxygen sulfur phosphorus and nitrogen so all these minerals are the they are getting so it's like a cycle one mineral is moving from one place to another and they move in a cycle for example if you talk about here the carbon cycle 
now sunlight falls on the plants and plants what they will do they will do the process of photosynthesis by which they make their own food but for that they need carbon dioxide that carbon dioxide it is you can say obtained from the atmosphere because in the atmosphere you have lot of carbon dioxide from where that carbon dioxide comes in the atmosphere it comes from the combustion in the burning of the fossil fuels in the factories burning of the fossil fuels in cars then it will go to the atmosphere or when the plants do the respiration they also release carbon dioxide or when the animal do the respiration they also release carbon dioxide so all these carbon dioxide it is going to the atmosphere from here from here and from here then from the atmosphere this carbon dioxide again goes to the plants in the during the process of photosynthesis and when these plants they decay or they do the respiration so again it will go to the atmosphere or if they will die then this carbon again goes to the you can say uh, soil or going to the ground then again from the ground from the waste materials again it goes up for example if they convert into fossil fuels then again this carbon when you burn the fossil fuels it again produce so it is like a cycle this carbon dioxide is moving in a cycle so this is known as carbon cycle any confusion allah no okay after that the other process that is known as oxygen cycle they saying that plants produce oxygen by the process of photosynthesis and then this oxygen goes up in the atmosphere and in that from the atmosphere the plants sorry the animals even the humans they also take the oxygen for respiration the animals also need oxygen for respiration and during the respiration process the plants also take the oxygen and again this oxygen is released you can say not released in the form of carbon dioxide it goes again again it goes to the plant again they will convert this carbon dioxide into oxygen and again it goes so again it is a oxygen in a cycle so that is known as oxygen cycle got it yes after that you have sulfur cycle sulfur you know sulfur is an element and it is mostly sulfur is found in the ground and sulfur is main sources of sulfur are volcanic activities volcanoes if you see the volcano you will find that it is around that volcano is there and other source of the sulfur are the fossil fuels they are saying that sulfur is found in fossil fuels the fuels inside the earth it is found in them when you will take out the fossil fuels and you burn them in factories or you burn them in cars or vehicles so the sulfur dioxide is produced because sulfur react with oxygen and give you sulfur dioxide so this sulfur dioxide goes to the atmosphere or if any volcanic activity happen as i told you that volcanoes they also have sulfur and when the sulfur is burned due to heat of the lava so it also produce sulfur dioxide so these sulfur dioxide they go to the atmosphere when they go to the atmosphere they mix with clouds when they mix with clouds you know the clouds are what water vapors and when they mix with that then so2 plus h2o they giving you what sulfuric acid h2so4 that is also known as the rain which has this acid that is known as acid rain and then this acid rain comes down go to the soil go to the water and all this one and from again this will go to the plants go to the animals 
and again it will absorb by the lot of organisms or the soil again it goes up so this is a process in which the sulfur is moving in a cycle that's known as sulfur cycle got it yes okay now you have the nitrogen cycle you know that nitrogen is an element and it is found in the atmosphere okay sometimes you find 78% and some you find 79% so all most of our air is made of nitrogen now this nitrogen how it moves in a cycle first of all you know that it is already found in the atmosphere so when it any plants grows or any due to any lightning or the thunderstorm this nitrogen is come down and absorb with the soil and they have a bacteria here that is known as nitrogen fixing bacteria that's known as nitrogen fixing bacteria what is the purpose of this bacteria this bacteria will take the nitrogen from the atmosphere and it will make it soluble in the soil wherever the nitrogen deficiency or nitrogen is less in quantity so it will fix that amount of nitrogen why because nitrogen is really important for the growth of the plants so they are getting the nitrogen from the atmosphere with the help of nitrogen fixing bacteria and this night sometime in the form of ammonia it also come in the ammonia it also come then sometime in the form of ammonium from the you can say the waste of the animals it comes and ammonia also so when it comes ammonia down again this nitrifying bacteria they break them down and again convert them into nitrogen dioxide nitrogen trioxide and again this nitrogen dioxide from here nitrogen again goes up and go to the atmosphere and from the atmosphere again it's come down so this is a cycle which is known as nitrogen cycle got it mm. after that these are the terms ecosystem population and all this one you can go through them it is easy they use a term here that is known as brackish water water that is salty but not as salty like sea water so that is known as brackish water it is salty but not like sea water okay now the ecosystems under threat so what there are some threats due to that the ecosystem they are saying it is we can say destroyed or disturbed so we first of all we'll see some major parts of the ecosystem and for number one is a wetland wetlands if you talk about the wetland you can see these are the areas in which you can find water then some dry part then again this is a dry part again water it is just like this combination so this type of the area in which you have the water and dry part mixed together it is known as wetlands you can see here also they are also known as wetlands mainly they are consist of water now importance of the wetland what is the importance of the wetland number 1 the shore line protection what is a shore line protection for example if you have any river or you have a sea so the area around the sea or around the river so they are known as shore lines they are known as the shore line in other word you can say the boundaries of the rivers or the other water body they are known as shore line 
wetlands along the shores of the lakes and rivers can protect against erosion if you have wetland so this soil will not dissolve in this river normally what happened for example if you have a river this size of the width after a few years you will find that the size of this river will become like this see the depth see the width it is increasing why because every year the soil around the river it will drop into the river and the width of the river is increasing if you plant the trees on the river edges or the banks of the river so then they will hold the soil the soil will not fall down in the river so like this they stop the erosion you can see here after that the wetland also maintenance of water quality wetlands can improve water quality by removing pollutants from surface water sometime there are some pollutants they are mixed with the water but if they are in a wetland so wetland will absorb or these areas will absorb the pollutant three pollutant removal process process provided by wetlands are particularly important now they are saying that how it happens how a wetland make the water quality better there is a process number one is known as sediment trapping you know that the wetland they have the small bushes the small grass when the water comes is there any solid particle or any particle which is mixed with the water it is stopped or trapped by the wetlands after that nutrients removal it will remove the nutrients and sometimes this is any chemical detoxification is there any chemical is there so wetland they will absorb that chemical so the wetland they are important because they maintain the water quality another important point of the wetlands flood control if you have a wetland areas and if any chance the flood comes so wetlands have a lot of capacity to hold the water the water which is coming as a flood it can be stored or it can be absorbed by the wetland so they can control it recharging of aquifers if you remember aquifers is a underground water now this is a aquifer down here now this is the wetland what happened when you are taking out the water from the ground and using it the level of water is decreasing every year and if you have a wetland here the water from the wetland it is absorbed and slowly slowly it will reach to the ground water or aquifer due to that the water level again rises so in other word you can say that it will again recharge the aquifer or ground water ground water level which was decreased because you took the water out again it is maintained by the wetland so wetlands are known as the recharge recharging of aquifers got it yes after that you have biological productivity wetlands are highly productive and biologically diverse systems that enhance water quality control erosion maintain stream flows then you have sequester carbon decrease the carbon and provide a home of at least one third of all threatened and endangered species threatened and endangered species mean the species which are less in population or less in number on the earth and there as a you can say chance maybe they will disappear from the, the earth so most of those type of species they are living in wetlands wetlands are important because they improve the water quality provide wildlife habitat so they are really important okay provide habitat and source of variety of products 
wetlands provide habitat for thousands of species of aquatic and terrestrial plants and animals. Wetlands are among of the most productive habitat on earth, providing shelter and nursery areas for commercially and recreationally imposed the important animals like fish, like shellfish. So most of the fish and the cell, uh, the shellfish, they come to the wetland, they lay eggs there and the their you can say offspring or children come out, their babies come out in a wetland when they grow up and then they go to the rivers and the seas. So wetlands are used as a nursery. Nursery means a place where you can look after the small babies or small organisms. So they are known as, so this wetland, they are really important because they provide habitat and also they give us lot of products.